We are back with yet another video, and this time we are going to talk about the ultraviolet vigilante, Roy Harper, and explore more about him. Infinite Frontier issue number 0 has just announced that the very deceased hero will be rekindled in their fresh continuity, and fans ought to be super excited for what is coming next. The first issue of DC's Infinite Frontier introduces readers to a fresh new status quo complete with possibilities, including the potential of beloved and iconic characters coming back to life. The Totality, a new squad of protagonists and antagonists working together on the dim side of the moon, declared at the end of Dark Knight's Death Metal that their instruments had picked up some deceased characters returning to life, albeit they did not know who. Following the Barnstormer climactic battle in Death Metal, mass revivals were already necessary, but DC made it clear that some characters who died before that event would be resurrected. Roy Harper, also known as the Arsenal, who was a former sidekick to the Green Arrow, a former Titan and an outlaw, and now formally dead, is the very first of these reincarnations revealed in Infinite Frontier issue number zero. Before we get into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's begin. The Becoming of Roy Harper in the Young Justice Animated Series Will Harper, previously known as Roy Harper, is a retired Star City superhero archer. He's a Cadmus-created clone of Roy Harper, who unintentionally served as the sleeper agent of Light, infiltrating the Justice League. When he was associated with Green Arrow, his moniker was Speedy, but following their split, he became the Red Arrow. He went on to marry Cheshire later, with whom he had a child, Leanne Nguyen Harper. In order to find the actual Roy Harper, Red Arrow takes a sabbatical from the Justice League. Red Arrow is continuing his leave now that he has been found focusing on becoming a father and establishing his business, the Bow Hunter Security. When Luthor's men were investigating Roy Harper's connections with North Relasia, they captured him and had him cloned by Cadmus. The original Speedy's memories and powers were implanted in the clone, as well as a subconscious goal to enter the Justice League. Cadmus then left clues for Green Arrow to follow, and post three months, Green Arrow was brought to Speedy, ignorant of the transfer. Icicle Jr. attacked a pedestrian bridge in Star City, prompting Green Arrow and Speedy to intervene. With a trick Arrow Speedy eventually knocked him out. Green Arrow teased Icicle about his glass jaw, but Speedy was more concerned with getting to the famous Hall of Justice. He was inclined to become a full-blown constituent of the League. His famous dialogue, You know, when I first met Oliver, he gave me a purpose, but he also gave me all of you. It makes sense that having a team is what helps me in the future, so why wait? Clearly states his keenness for the League. Roy's personality, inherent to his programming, is diametrically opposed to that of his old mentor, Green Arrow. Unlike Green Arrow, who has a laid-back and easy-going demeanor, Roy is significantly more serious and does not tolerate immature behavior. He despised being referred to as a sidekick and snarled at anyone who used the term. He was a hothead with a short fuse. Roy was the most brazen and vocal of the first four adolescent students. Roy's life came crashing down as he discovered he was a clone. He felt like a carbon copy of the original, who was unworthy of care or attention. Because of his compulsive hunt for Speedy, he left himself and his connection with the Cheshire Degenerate. By 2018, he had assumed the mantle of Will and was completely free of his history of remorse and addiction. Will has acclimated to a pretty normal existence as a parent and proprietor of the Bow Hunter Security Company, having put the hero life behind. In fact, because of his new obligations as a father, he sees it in a critical outlook. Despite this, he is not afraid to return to action if necessary. He's also come to accept the genuine Roy as well as Jim as members of his family, even offering that they work for him. Will still loves Cheshire, despite his pretense of successfully making peace with her absence from his life. Will has blue eyes and auburn hair. He is almost as tall as Aqualad when it comes to stature. He has grown quite muscular, especially on his upper body, as a result of his intense training with Green Arrow. Because of his serious demeanor, he rarely smiles, instead opting for a scowl or a deadpan expression as his default facial expression. He wore a yellow 16th century style hat with a plume, yellow gloves, belt, and boots along with a red suit while posing as Speedy. After parting as Green Arrow's companion, he ditched the headgear. The suit was updated after he rebranded himself as the Red Arrow. It was primarily black with a collar and a crimson chest. Will's despondency led to a lack of grooming, sleep, and exercise by 2016, causing him to lose muscle, develop dark circles and puffiness under and around his eyes, growing his hair scruffy, and grow a stubble on his chin. He began developing his body and skills again with Cheshire's assistance. Will has grown a beard and gained some weight by 2018, but he is still in excellent enough form to withstand his own in a battle with Brick. He also shaved his beard and restyled his hair to an earlier look. His crossbow is now joined to his chest by two gray shoulder straps and his black mittens are fingerless. Thank <laughs> you. 
His impactful presence in the Arrowverse. Born and raised amidst the Glades, Speedy, or Roy, became friends with Oliver, a vigilante known to be the Hood, who was subsequently named the Arrow. Roy was injected with the Mirakuo before Slade Wilson attacked Starling City, transforming him into a mortal weapon with range abilities, which include superhuman strength, tremendous endurance, and an expedited healing factor. However, this came at a cost of a slow degeneration of his cognitive condition. Oliver later used a counter serum made by Star Labs to cure him. Roy had no choice but to leave Star City and Team Arrow to start a fresh life as Jason. Roy gave Tia his arsenal armor before he left, which she then wore as her outlaw character, Speedy. The time Noah Cutler coerced Roy into stealing technology components, Roy momentarily returned to vigilanteism. He was eventually liberated from Noah's influence and transported to a new location. Roy was apprehended and detained in 2018 by unscrupulous Star City Sheriff Department officials working with Ricardo Diaz, who demanded he testifies against Oliver to be indeed the Green Arrow. Team Arrow saved him, and he subsequently departed Star City with Nissa Al Ghul and Tia to search the world's undiscovered Lazarus pits, finally resuming vigilantism. Roy was gravely wounded in a fight to withstand the Thanatos Guild during his mission and had to be treated amidst a Lazarus pit. He developed a bloodlust as a result of his last contact with the Mirakuo, which the Lotus Brew could not cure. When Oliver officially confessed to becoming Green Arrow, Roy's name about his vigilante status was cleared. Roy exiled himself to Lian Yu in an alternate timeline to atone for the deaths of a couple of naive men during a bloodthirst attack. In 2040, Roy and William Clayton reunited in Star City to help the Canaries. Roy tried to propose to Tia, and he was prepared to begin a new life, which she gladly embraced on the prerequisite that he would never abandon her as he had before. Roy attended Oliver's burial on Earth Prime post the crisis. Tia and Roy's relationship began on Shiki grounds when he stole her handbag and pretended to get out of it. However, the two eventually found common ground. Both of them were passionate and young, but they were also prone to being irresponsible and rash. While Roy was under the spell of the Mirakuru, his love for Tia kept him focused and in control. Roy assured Tia that he loved her when he left Star City in Season 3, but that he planned to leave her behind for safety. Both have grown up a lot since they were kids in Season 1. Their volatile personalities created a lot of stress, and they broke up and reconnected several times over the years. Roy informs Tia in the series' conclusion that loving her altered his life, and the two get engaged. In the absence of the Hood, Roy spent evenings patrolling the lanes and combating criminals shortly after the Glades were destroyed. As a result, he was frequently arrested by the police for obstruction. When Roy attempted to prevent a raping one night, the Canary appeared and struck out all of the would-be offenders in a matter of seconds. Roy went back to work at Verdant, which Tia now owned and ran. Roy's right hand was entrapped under massive wreckage from a fatal plane crash in one of his later missions. Roy urged the crew to cut his arm free in order to preserve his life, as well as get everyone to a evacuate before opponents came or the aircraft's fuel exploded. Roy is equipped to use a quiver again after receiving a mechanical substitute for a severed limb from Argus. Roy's amputation is identical to the one he received from the villain Prometheus in the comics. Victor Stone, who is better known as the Cyborg, provided him with a replacement technological arm in the comics. Roy was taken towards the Queen Mansion, where Antia and Zen watched after him in secrecy. Oliver had his security, John Diggle, remove the dart from Roy's limb and treat the wound. Roy was later apprehended and infused with the Mirakuru, after which Brother Blood declared him a failure. On the other hand, Roy appeared to have recovered. Roy was hurt by some glass while making love with Tia, but the injuries healed rapidly, much to his surprise. Later, when a light platform was poised to fall on Moira at Sebastian Blood's rally, Roy dashed to her aid and blocked the platform. Roy and Tia traveled around the world to fight the Thanatos Guild and demolish the League of Assassins' last Lazarus pits. He was tragically injured by an arrow on one of their missions. Tia planned to use one of the pits to resuscitate him before destroying it. When Roy was resurrected, he felt the same bloodlust that Tia and Sarah did when they were revived. Tia and Nyssa tried to retreat him the same way they cured Tia, but it didn't work, so he opted to flee for Tia's safety. He eventually overcame his want for blood, and the two reunited. Despite Roy's well-established relationship with Tia, he does not necessarily get along with Moira, Tia's mother. Moira was concerned with Roy's potential effect on her daughter's life as a criminal. Moira eventually warms on to Roy as the novel unfolds, even encouraging Tia to keep dating him. Moira passes away in Season 2 in the original reality. Thus, she never gets to witness Roy and Tia grow up to be heroes. However, in the post-crisis universe, Roy observes that the revived Moira Crean appears to enjoy him more than the pre-crisis Moira. Oliver and Roy grabbed aboard a drug plane, as well as ascended to the top not long after defeating Slade. They fought to stay alive as Felicity attempted to breach the plane's Wi-Fi from their base. Diggle proposed using Plan B because he could not receive a clean signal. They started fighting back as the inhabitants began firing at them. Oliver shot a dart at the captain, which ended up opening and exposing a ball, which smacked the guy right in the face. Oliver then stabbed an arrow into the aircraft, which exploded, allowing Oliver and Roy to escape. Oliver began maneuvering the plane back to stability while Roy pondered the newfound boxing glove arrow. He rigged the controls with an autopilot system and set about defeating the other passengers.
passengers. Oliver's remark briefly sidetracked Roy that he was speedy. One of the several Spanish-speaking men sought to fire his weapons at Roy at this point, only to be hit in the chest by Oliver. Roy was unfortunately wounded by a gunshot and began to fall from the plane. Oliver leapt from the plane to grab Roy and recommended Dick prepare for surgery after confirming Felicity's autopilot gadget was operating. All the team could do after performing surgery on Roy was to wait. Roy understood how to battle his way out of a challenging position, but he improved his hand-to-hand -hand and archery abilities over time thanks to Oliver's teachings. He progressed from being a minor thief to a recognized Star City hero, fighting side by side with the Green Arrow along with the Black Canary among other Team Arrow members. As the Arrow, Roy reminded Oliver that he saved and changed his life in more than one way. Oliver gave him a sense of obligation and responsibility along with a sense of purpose. He tries to repay Oliver for the knowledge and talents he gave him in a variety of ways, including saving Oliver's kid in the finale of the series. Team Arrow taught Roy Harper a lot about compromising for the betterment of others. Working with them aided in the emergence of the superhero that had always existed inside of him. When Roy initially appeared, he was all about himself, eager to say or do anything to further his own interests. After the Arrow rescues him, he discovers that he is destined for much more over the next few episodes. During the Glades undertaking, Roy put his life on the line to save a bus full of people. In Season 3, he took the blame for Oliver by pretending to be the Arrow and was sentenced to jail, where he nearly perished. He subsequently departed Star City to defend his instructor Oliver and his girlfriend Tia as well as his friends. In Star City's pre-crisis timeline, he and the other senior Team Arrow members similarly gave up their rights and freedom for the legacy heroes. When Roy initially started dating Tia, Roy and Oliver had a strained relationship. Oliver wished to safeguard his sister and could not believe Roy could do so. He eventually decided to coach Roy so that he could master his power and not consume to his rage. When Roy was administered with Mirakuru, Oliver began to pay closer attention to him and care for him, trying to ensure that he did not give up control or go insane. To gain Roy's trust, Oliver had to expose his hidden identity, but doing so strengthened their relationship as mentor and protege. Despite their disagreements over the years, Roy gradually became more open to Oliver's guidance, and Oliver trusted Diggle and Roy to safeguard the city if anything happened to him. Roy began the series as an ordinary guy, but by season 2 he had become one of the numerous people who Slade Wilson and Sebastian Blood had experimented on from the Mirror Crew and Meta Soldier Elixir. Oliver managed to resuscitate Roy with CPR after it first killed him. Roy instantly realized that the Elixir had given him superpowers. However, it had the unpleasant side effect of making him violent and psychologically unstable. Thankfully, the Flash's staff at Star Labs were able to cure him of the serum. According to John Diggle, Roy Harper was five different types of furious as a youngster going through puberty in the Glades. He was rash and impulsive and prone to letting his rage get the better of him. Roy not only mastered controlling his anger during the course of the episode, but he also managed to redirect it into a positive aim for helping his community and his friends. He learned about restraint and sacrifice with Oliver's aid, as well as finding a cause for his rage and his life. Roy finally relocated to Hub City and assumed a new identity. He got a message from the calculator in early 2016, threatening to reveal Roy's name to the public if he did not concede to his requests. Roy went to Star City and began robbing several tech businesses for components, wearing a contact lens camera in his right eye for the calculator to watch him. The robberies were discovered quickly and Team Arrow attempted to stop Roy. Roy settled in St. Rock at some time, though he was kidnapped and attacked by unscrupulous Star City Sheriff's Department personnel on Ricardo Diaz's salary in April 2018. Snowbirds Don't Fly Roy Harper and Award-Winning Mature Comic Book Story Snowbirds Don't Fly is an anti-drug two-part comic tale arc that first appeared in DC Comics Green Lantern Green Arrow issue number 85 and issue number 86 in 1971. Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams wrote the plot. The latter also collaborated with Dick Giordano on the art. It follows Green Lantern and Green Arrow as they battle drug traffickers. Seeing Green Arrow's protege Roy Harper's heroin addiction and dealing with the consequences of his confession. The tone of this tale is defined in the phrase on the cover outside. DC attacks youth's greatest problem, drugs. It is considered a watershed event in presenting mature subjects in DC comics. Green Arrow, Oliver Green, comes across muggers who shoot him with a crossbow in the first section. Green Lantern, Green Arrow issue number 85. Surprisingly, his own arrow arrows are loaded inside the weapon. When Green Arrow and his closest buddy Green Lantern Hal Jordan track down the attackers, they discover that the muggers are drug addicts in need of money and they are startled to see Queen's protege Speedy, known as Roy Harper, among them. They believe he is secretly working to arrest the addicts, but when he attempts to shoot heroin, Queen catches him red-handed. When they battle crime together, it becomes clear that the stolen arrows belong to Queen and were distributed by Harper. 
A furious Green Arrow thrashes at his ward in the second half, Green Lantern, Green Arrow, issue number 86. Harper quits cold turkey out of shame while one of the addicts dies of a heroin overdose. Arrow and Lantern confront the drug ring's kingpin, a pharmaceutics executive who publicly criticizes drug addiction and pay a visit to the junkie's burial. The renowned Shazam Award for the best individual story was given to the Snowbirds Don't Fly storyline in 1971. In reaction to the situation, New York Mayor John Lindsay sent a letter to DC applauding them, which was published in the issue of number 86. The Snowbirds Don't Fly, Jonah Wayland of Comic Book Resources hailed the saga as the beginning of a new era of socially conscious Green Lantern, Green Arrow comics. The slant eventually opened up in the DC universe to other minorities of marginalized groups, such as homosexual characters, and culminated in the personality of Mia Dairden, who was Roy Harper's heir as the Green Arrow's Oliver Queen's partner in crime, Speedy, who was not just a sufferer of child prostitution, but also later shown to be HIV positive. Despite her tragic destiny, writer Jude Winnick portrays her as a vibrant, proactive heroine. Roy Harper in the DC Animated Series and Movies Roy Harper, or Speedy, appeared in the Teen Titans components of Aquaman Superman Hour of Adventure, where Pat Harrington Jr. voiced him. Roy Harper appeared in Teen Titans, where Mike Irwin voiced him. After that, he appeared in a brief cameo in episode Winner Take All, where he displays a grave and business-like perspective, and he goes on to merge the Teen Titans sister bunch Titans East in their self-proclaimed two-part episode showcasing their customary bad boy essence. Roy Harper also appears in the Just Justice League Unlimited Saga, The Patriot Act, where he was voiced yet again by Mike Irwin. He also has a cameo in issue number 30 of the Justice League Unlimited comic tie-in, in which he and Booster Gold have to fend the Watchtower from Dr. Polaris. Roy Harper makes an entry in Batman The Brave and the Bold, where he was voiced by Jason Marsden, mainly at least, and by Ryan Oga in segments. This rendition is illustrated as a typecasted kid psychic, enunciating phrases like, golly. Crispin Freeman's Roy Harper makes an appearance in Young Justice. This version began as speedy, but was abducted by the light, who severed his right arm in order to create two clones of him and controlling them using a blend of hypnosis and programming to suit their goals. One of the clones would become Jim Harper, or Guardian, who works as a security for Project Cadmus while pretending to be Roy Harper's uncle and functioning as a superhero. At the same time, the other would be convinced that he was the genuine Roy Harper and operates as a secret agent inside the Justice League. The new Roy wedded Cheshire and had a baby girl, Leanne Yun Harper, after becoming Red Arrow and eventually joining the League and learning of his actual identity. He spent the next five years hunting for the actual Roy, causing his health and friendships to deteriorate. When the true Roy is discovered, he seeks vengeance against Light supporter Lex Luthor, who has given him a prosthetic arm. Roy assumes the moniker Arsenal and temporarily enters the team before being expelled for his irresponsibility and disobedience. At the same time, the other Roy quits being a vigilante to concentrate on becoming a parent. Speedy goes on to make cameos in films established in the DC animated movie universe. Speedy first debuts in T-Titans The Judas Contract, where he was voiced again by Crispin Freeman. Roy Harper also enters Teen Titans Go, where Scott Menville voiced him. This rendition is a constituent of the Teen Titans. In Justice League Dark, Apocalypse War, Speedy unites Earth's heroes in encountering Darkseid merely to be slaughtered in battle. Two interpretations of Roy Harper make a fleeting appearance in Teen Titans Go to the movies. What makes him such a unique character? Roy's ailments, including the gash in his limb from being fired with an arrow, were entirely healed when he was infused with a Miyakura. Each of Roy's physical attributes was considerably enhanced to a superhuman degree. His physique had been artificially enhanced. Roy's physical strength was increased by the Miyakura serum, which allowed him to lift nearly one ton of weight. The Miyakura improved his durability, and his resistance advanced to the point where he could pound through concrete walls and military-grade metal that could survive regular bombs without bleeding or harm. It also improved his physical speed enabling him to move and run quicker than the best human athlete. Roy had fantastic endurance and stamina. He could obtain numerous gunshot wounds without cringing, and when he was shot in hand at point blank, it really all appeared to do was just piss him off. With Roy's advanced reflexes, he can react much quicker than an average human could. It could be considered that Miracuro greatly enhanced Roy's senses, like Slade Wilson, permitting him to hear, see, and smell far sounder than any average human could. With a catalytic, restorative factor, the Miracuro elixir allowed Roy to quickly recuperate from injuries that would be 
be catastrophic for any ordinary human being. When combating crime, Roy wears a protective armor built by Lodi as his legendary alter ego Arsenal to mask his identity from his foes. Arsenal, Roy's heroic alter ego, sports a dark crimson Arsenal mask. It's comprised of a compressible microfabric that efficiently conceals Roy's identity while allowing him to see freely. Roy carries his arrows in a brown quiver. Roy, like Oliver, makes his own arrows. Roy employed trick arrows containing Mirakira cure heads in the combat against Slade Wilson's forces. Oliver taught Roy archery and he uses a crimson bow in a battle for both shooting and close fighting. Roy wears two Eskrima sticks on both of his lower legs as Arsenal. He wielded them to battle Digger Harkness and Simon LaCroix. After the arrow saved him from the savior, Roy earned his first flèche, which he preserved as a memento as a remembrance of the occasion. His right leg is adorned with the four throwing knives and he has a military knife slung over the rear of his waistband. He utilized a wooden bow for his archery lessons. When he speaks to people who do not recognize his identity, Roy uses a speech filter to hide his voice. Roy is shown riding the bike to move around the city while on patrol for Arsenal. Roy possesses a bionic mechanical arm with which he can grasp a bow. That is how you put a guy in the The undisputed vigilante of all time. Roy, as a traveling hero, someone even his allies are unaware is out there combating tooth and nail, fits his character nicely, especially with the notion that he'll be able to low-tech way with a crossbow, quiver full of darts, and a strong desire to do good. Another fascinating point to notice is that Roy appears to be fully aware that he has been brought back to life instead of having his death interpreted by new or twisted occurrences, which opens up some intriguing possibilities for individuals who return to the mortal realm. While many fans were hoping for the turn of Alfred Pennyworth, who was Batman's sadly deceased butler, in Infinite Frontier issue number 0. Roy's reappearance is a better fit for the event. Infinite Frontier issue number 0 pledged to excite fans and it delivered when it chose Roy Harper to be its primary reborn hero. The romanticism of the traveling hero who might go anywhere and accomplish anything is a beautiful chord for this collection, which embraces fresh potential as its cardinal virtue, just as Roy is prepared to take a tremendous leap into the unknown. And don't forget, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe everyone. Thank you all.